Hey guys, how's it going? It's Amanda. So today we're looking at the Anchor 767, and this is probably one of the best under $2,000 solar power stations that you can use to power your van life, your off-grid cabin, even just your whole house backup or overlanding, things like that. I've been using one of their smaller batteries, and when they offered to send me their powerhouse 767, I was ecstatic to get the Big Daddy version, and I was so happy to be able to test this out and share with you guys. I will go over a lot of the details, but I don't have the expandable battery. But by adding it to their setup, you go from 2,048 watt hours to 4,096 watt hours. And these both have LifePo 4 batteries. And if you're not familiar with them, a lot of competitor power stations are still using the old style batteries. And those get around 500 charge cycles before they're going to start slowing down how much capacity they hold. The new LifePo 4 batteries will hold up to 3,000 charges and that's using it almost every day for 10 years. And add that to their five-year warranty. This thing should last you a long time. Looking inside the box, the first thing you're going to find is this Anchor Brandon cable bag at the very top. And inside of that, you're going to find your standard computer style cable. That's great because you have no big power bricks and you can swap it out or get a replacement easily. Um, you have your solar input that extends up to five panels into one so you can get the max power in. And then you have your cigarette lighter, which is also XT60 to cigarette lighter. You'll find a lot of foam on this thing. This thing comes in at 67 pounds. So this is a heavy big boy and you want a lot of packaging in there to keep this nice and safe. And on the back of this, there is a warning to recharge this to activate it. I kept pushing the buttons. I was like, what the heck? So finally I plugged it in and it turned right on, no problem. And later I found this letting you know that. So I'm warning you right now. So when I finally got mine turned on, it says it was at 30% and it was gonna take 1.3 hours to charge. Looking here at the front panel, you have four AC outlets that are three prongs. You can run up to 2,400 watts. You have your 30 amp RV outlet so you can power your whole RV something I've never seen before this has two car sockets so 12 volts so a lot of off-grid or camping things you can find like electric blankets your fridge your coffee pot they have little like heated pans all kinds of things you can run off of that so having that second one to run after your fridge is killer there are three USB-C ports, which are 100 watts, so you can power high power things with those, which is really killer. And then there's two smart or quick charge, I guess is what they call it, USB-A ports, the old style bigger ones. Looking up to the top, you will see there is a light bar with three different light settings. And then there's also an SOS mode, so you can notify somebody to send help if they can see your light. Looking at the top, this has a very flat design and the handles are off to the side, which this is definitely a hefty beast, but that also makes packing in your car much easier than having carry handles on the top or things that protrude. So that's really awesome. Just above one of the handles, you see a little arrow here letting you know that there is a button you can push and you can extend that out and use that suitcase style to carry this thing around to save your back. Now I got into some soft mud here and I didn't even realize it because it was still just chugging along, even though it was kind of getting a little bouncy, but my wheels were all caked up with mud and it still didn't really slow me down. I think it's got like four and a half, almost five inch wheels. And those things come in handy besides just moving it, sliding it into your vehicle and getting it into place. You don't have to try to grip it and lift it up and over considering the fact that it's got like little grippy feet on the bottom to keep it from sliding around. Those save your back a lot. Moved around to the back, you have a little flip down panel and you have your XD connector for your solar and your car charging. Um, the next one they say it is a overcharge protection. So I don't know if that's just a reset or if there's like a fuse in there. And then you have your 1440 watt input charger, which gives you that super fast charging. And you can get this thing charged up to 80% in an hour and a half. And that is just awesome when you are in a rush and ready to go. And then down here at the bottom, this rubber sealed panel is your connector to connect your expandable battery. There's just so much info on this little display port. You got your recharge time, what percentage you're at. You got a little diagram showing you the little emblems for each of the ports it's using, what the input is, what the output is, and it shows even that I'm connected to the app and that I have power saving mode on. That power saving mode, if it doesn't detect any kind of usage after 15 minutes, it will shut off your ports. So that is something I definitely suggest leaving on all the time. And then the other things that you can see here, the buttons, you can press them on and off manually. The USB outlets will automatically detect that they are on and you don't have to power them on or off. And then there's the power saving mode and your Bluetooth buttons here. 
So looking at the app, you can see it's at 94% charged at 66 degrees. There's a remaining time of 0.1 hours. There's no DC input, but there is an AC in out input. <laughs> and then there is an output going from the AC ports and the carport and even the USB ones. You can see which ones are toggled on. You can power off the AC or the carports right here from the app. You have your power saving mode and even the brightness of your light bar you can change right here. If we go up to the top, there is a settings mode and we can go in there and actually change at what speed or watt hours this thing charges at. You just toggle which one you want and then hit save. And if we go back, you can see now the AC input dropped down to 758 watts, 764, 770. So then also you have your SOS light mode, your screen brightness, your screen timeout. You can rechange change your name on here. Your temperatures from Fahrenheit to Celsius. You can click this button here. I'm already upgraded to the latest firmware, restore factory settings, um, yeah, or delete the device. So that is a look at the app. So for me personally, here's some electronic things that need to be charged that I take camping. My electric chainsaw for any downed trees or gathering some lumber. Um, my jump pack in case I have a dead battery. My drone, my Dometic faucet, my XPED pump for my mattress, air mattress, um, speakers, a multitude of lights, um, electric lighter, GPS communicator, headlamp, flashlights, phone, camera batteries, AirPods, those are kind of things I take. And I tried, I wanted to plug in everything, but I couldn't, I just didn't even have enough cords um, that fit the right devices and the holes that it had. But I plugged in as many as I could and I only was pulling like 160 something watt hours. And it said I could do this for like 9.6 hours. I also took this out and tested the solar input. This is not one that Anchor sent me. This is one I already had. This is a 200 watt uh, panel. I will leave the one I have in the link down below if you guys would like to check that out. I've seen it pull 180 something watts, so it's pretty efficient. And at this day, at this time, it was bringing in, what's it say, 142, 146, um, but it was also outputting 67 watt hours. So with that combination, charging my drone and stuff, it would have taken three point took in, taken 3.2 hours at 91% to get it to 100%. So if I would have shut that AC off, it probably would have changed that. But if remember, you get five panels total, you can get it up to that thousand watts. So I definitely would like to pick up another one to get a total of 400 watts because those babies are expensive. <laughs> so it will take me a while to add those in. I test around my house to find the most intense thing that I could find to pull any kind of watts to show you guys. And this heat gun on low was pulling 400-ish watts watts and it said we can run it at 4.1 hours and if we go ahead and kick it up to high you can see it's running at 1177 1166 and we could run it at 1.4 hours if we had to run this out on some job site so i have zero complaints but here's one thing i would like to mention I don't know if there's like a 90 degree plug that's shorter and takes up less space or if maybe in the future <laughs> they can put like some 12 volts on the end because that's the only thing I wish I had that space back but it's definitely not a complaint. I just worry that I'm going to break it the port or the cords off by having to use this in the car with my fridge. So just a thought to pass along, not necessarily a complaint, anything like that, but something I'd love to see. Or if you guys have any kind of solutions, drop them in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.